in this video we will uh, learn about ANSCOM based quartlet uh, it's related to correlation and some of the shortcomings of correlation analysis um, this analysis was done by one of the famous statistician and the name ANSCOMBE actually has come from his name so it's basically about a very important shortcoming of the correlation analysis which is that just by looking at the correlation statistics you cannot really find out the relationship between two variables it could sometimes give uh, misleading results and he has uh, taken an example to show that where you can see that you know two uh, four sets of data sets having a completely different uh, distributions will still be having same correlation statistics same mean same variance same correlation uh, statistics so that's something uh, to worry about so the point here is that you cannot simply uh, find out um, the relationship between variables just by looking at the correlation statistics the correlation coefficients but you also have to do the um, the visualization of the data so the whole point of uh, his argument in this is that you have to do uh, a visual inspection of the data visual inspection of the relationship uh, so that should supplement your correlation coefficient okay and here this example as you see on the slide you know see that you have relationship between y and x all four having completely different relationship but having same correlation coefficient so that could be a possible case and we'll see some of the more weaknesses of correlation coefficient and the normal correlation you know analysis that people do in research and why you should give importance to the visualization of data so i uh, will start with interpretation of correlation bit about correlation causality and um, learn a bit about having correlation perfect correlation or no correlation and some of the other weaknesses related to um, uh, you know presence of outlier having restricted data and so on and so forth so these are some of the things we will discuss in this lecture so what is a correlation basically it's uh, some sort of a quantitative measure of relationship between two variables uh, it has to be interpreted in a prop proper manner because sometimes it is perceived as a causation that's not true actually right um, and, and we'll see actually how it is different from causality actually um, the thing is that correlation can very well be uh, computed using the formula correlation formula but you cannot interpret without having the proper scatter plot of that so scatter plot is very important uh, to uh, interpret correlation value so here is this example so you see uh, there is some to be a perfect correlation negative correlation perfect correlation right the correlation uh, coefficient is 0.9 so that's almost like perfect correlation right between these two variables and then here is this data where you seem to have no correlation the correlation coefficient is just 0.1 percent 0.1 so that's very very low right so no seems to be no relationship and here you see have somewhat moderate relationship you have co correlation coefficient at 0.72 so that's not perfect correlation but also not no correlation so it's somewhere in between so that's um, yeah a moderate level of uh, correlation now so let's learn about unscombe squatlet squatlet is about four right four variables so this was example an initial example that he took actually to demonstrate this issue in the correlation analysis so here you have x1 x2 there are four sets of x x and y variables x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 x4 y4 these are some of the things that we have seen right in the plots that we just saw in the four plots interesting thing is that and you have some 11 observations so why 11 because that was basically in his example he took 11 such observations and what he really showed that in this four combination of variables x y you see that the mean of each y variable is 7.5 the mean of each x variable is 9 the <coughs> variance is about uh, 11 for x and for y it is 4.13 and the correlation is 0.82 so correlation between each x y combination that means x1 y1 x2 y2 1 so for each it's 0.82 that means correlation is same mean is same for each x and each y and 
more interestingly if you actually fit a linear regression line for x1 y1 or x2 y2 each of these four combination you will get this equation exactly like this y hat equal to 0.5x plus 3 that means even though we saw right in the previous graphs even though we see completely different distribution of data you still get the best fit line you still get the same correlation so it's showing actually how important it is to interpret your uh, regression or correlation analysis um, uh, <clears throat> with uh, with the help of uh, visualization or visual plots uh, it's so important right because sometimes very rare situation obviously not always in some rare situation it could give completely misleading uh, results and here you see right here you see completely different distribution but same summary statistics, same uh, correlation, same regression line and that could uh, give uh, wrong re uh, interpretation if you don't take these plots or graphs into account. A bit about correlation and causality, this is a very common thing. Uh, so when you learn correlation analysis, the first thing actually taught to people that correlation is not causation, that means two variables may be correlated, there may be a strong correlation coefficient between them but that does not mean one causes the other that need not be true sometimes it is true sometimes it is not true and there are many such examples right um, I mean if you do a bit of a google search about spurious correlation you will find many uh, such weird examples right? you know one such example is correlation between number of fire trucks sent to the fire and the dollar damage done by the fire you know there's a strong correlation but there's there's no causality at all, right? It makes no sense to, uh, you know, think that there is a causality. So there's many such examples uh, where, you know, you find strong correlation, but there's no causation there. Perfect correlation, <coughs> right? Um, two variables may be highly correlated, uh, but they may not have a strong causality also. So that could also be uh, a situation. And then zero correlation. So when you see a correlation coefficient of zero, a correlation coefficient taking a value of zero, sometimes people conclude that there is no correlation between two variables. That's not true. That's not always true. Many a times the correlation is actually nonlinear. And when you use a Pearson correlation uh, measure, that does not quantify or that does not measure the nonlinear relationship. It only measures the linear relationship and sometimes there is no relationship but there is non-linear relationship which is not captured here hence there is a relationship even though the correlation coefficient takes a value of zero so that's something to keep in mind and hence important to uh, build a scatter plot and then combining populations so what happens is that if you uh, combine populations uh, for example you have two sets of variables uh, which are highly correlated, another sets of variable highly correlated, you combine them, there may not exist correlation. People assume that there will be correlation, but it's not true always. Then restriction of range, and this is a typical problem called uh, the truncation of data, right, uh, or sparse data in some cases, where, you know, you, for example, this is a good example, actually, you have GRE score and the uh, um, um, and the IQ level or something like that or GRE score or employability right but the problem is that in such a data there are many people who are excluded from this sample because a lot of people having uh, low GRE score were not admitted to the university hence their data is not available so when you do a correlation plot for them it could give a misleading result so if you were to include all these extra cases the ones which are not part of the sample then you could get a completely different um, correlation statistic so that's something to keep in mind and that there's something called third variable fallacy which means that uh, if two variables are highly correlated with a third variable it is assumed that these two co variables are highly correlated among themselves that may not always be true um, it could be true many times but it need not be true so you can't assume that you cannot infer that from it uh, it has to be properly uh, checked, right? So just because x1, uh, y are uh, highly correlated with g does not mean that x and y are highly correlated among themselves. So that's something to keep in mind. 
so these are some of the issues and in the context of uh, this particular analysis i thought you know giving a bit overview of the some of the issues that you you could face during correlation analysis and how you should tackle them how you should supplement your correlation analysis with some Uh, visual analysis.